She's been labeled as a heroine of the 21st century, a symbol of defiance in Mexico's ruthless drug cartel, and now she's paid the ultimate price for the freedom of her people. Tonight, we honor the life of Mario Santos, Girls Tieta. Since outgoing President Felipe Calderon declared war on the country's drug cartel in 2006, over 60,000 people have perished, including over 20 mayors. While we recognize the bravery of all of these mayors, perhaps none stands out like the courage and defiance of Mario Santos Gros Tieta. She was born in 1976 in Tiquicheo, Michoacan, Mexico, and later on earned her PhD in medicine. She began her political career by joining the Institutional Revolutionary Party, and from 2008 to 2011, she served as the mayor of Tiquicheo, a small town in the western state of Michoacan. The physical landscape of the area is based on several drug trafficking organizations, namely La Familia Michoacana and the Knights of Templar Cartel. Michoacan is a leading producer of marijuana and opium poppy, making it a lucrative smuggling route for narcotics heading towards the United States. Despite the threats, she denounced the activities of these groups publicly and maintained a drug-free police force. The drug cartels, which are constantly fighting against each other for territorial control, often target mayors due to their infiltration in the Mexican political system. Mexico has more than 2,500 municipalities, but many of them are far from the city's capitals and therefore lack benefits. Many of these areas are plagued with drug-related violence, so the political parties have faced difficulties finding the people to step up for the job. But there is one shining light in the ever-increasing darkness that is in the drug war. Mario Santos Gros Tieta focused on improving social services for her small town and left Mexico's drug cartels to the federal police, explaining that she had a responsibility towards the people, the children, women, elderly, and men who each day rip apart their souls just to bring home a loaf of bread. In 2009, she spoke about the importance of entrusting the mayor's office to a woman. She said, the most important thing is to not be afraid, gaining a reputation for her civic mindedness. Stories of heroes and villains constantly emerge from Mexico, where acts of bravery and savagery coexist in the midst of a plague of drug violence. The first assassination attempt came in October of 2009, when the car that she was traveling in with her first husband, Jose Sanchez, came under fire from gunmen in the town of El Lemoyne. The attack claimed his life, but Goros Tieta lived. The next attempt on her life was just three months later, when a masked group carrying assault rifles ambushed her on the road between Macoacan and Guerrero State. On 23rd January of 2010, Goros Tieta was attacked by armed gunmen in Cuyodad, Altamirano, Guerrero, after coming back with four other people from a local event. She was severely injured after being hit by three bullets, one of the abdomen, one of the thorax, and one of the leg, and was taken to a local hospital. Among the injured were the mayor's brother, the driver of the vehicle, who was shot twice, the head of the Institute of Women of Tiquiero, and a journalist. As well as receiving wounds in the crash after the shooting, Gros Tieta had to use a colostomy bag. She said her wounds left her in constant pain, but she refused to resign and kept working as mayor. The van she was traveling in was peppered by 30 bullets, three of which hit her. This time her wounds were more severe, leaving multiple scars and forcing her to wear a colostomy bag. She was left in constant pain with an unimaginable courage and despite being a marked woman, she remained defiant to the very end. Lifting her shirt at one point to show reporters her bullet wounds and scars after the second attack. I wanted to show them my wounded, mutilated, humiliated body because I'm not ashamed of it. Because it is a product of the great misfortunes that have scarred my life and that of my children and my family. Despite my own safety and that of my family, what occupies my mind is the responsibility towards my people, the children, the women, the elderly, and the men who break their souls without rest to find a piece of bread for their children. Freedom brings with it responsibilities and I don't dare fall behind. My road is not yet finished. The footprint that we leave behind in our country depends on the battle that we lose and the loyalty we put into it. 
In a statement to the public made at that time, the devout Catholic said, At another stage in my life, perhaps I may have resigned from what I have, my position, my responsibilities as the leader of my Tikiero. But today, no. It's not possible for me to surrender when I have three children whom I have to educate by setting an example, and also because of the memory of the man of my life, the father of my three little ones, the one who was able to teach me the value of things and to fight for them. Although he is no longer with us, he continues to be the light that guides my decisions. She added, I struggled day to day to erase my mind the images of the horror I lived and that others who did not deserve or expect it also suffered. Her mayoral term came to an end in 2011, and so did her police protection. Girls Tieta then retired from politics, returned to her normal lifestyle, remarried, and dedicated her time to raise her three kids. On November 12, 2012, Goros Tieta was driving her daughter to school in Moriella around 8.30 a.m. when a vehicle cut both of them off of the road. Two armed men descended from the vehicle and forced her out of the car as onlookers watched the incident. Goros Tieta Salazar pleaded with her abductors to let her daughter go unharmed, and then she agreed to go with the kidnappers, with the kidnappers in their vehicle. The family of the former mayor thought it was a ransom kidnapping and waited two days before notifying the police of the abduction. After not hearing from Goros Tieta, On November 15th, the police managed to locate the body after several farm workers from the rural community of San Juan, Terra Romeo, in Quizio found the corpse on their way to work. She had been beaten, stabbed, and burned. Postmortem reports indicated that she died of a traumatic brain injury after receiving severe blows to the head. The governor of Maculacan said that organized crime was undoubtedly involved. Gros Tieta Salazar was buried alongside her husband, Jose Santos Chavez, at a tomb in a local cemetery in Tiquio, her hometown. It was a shocking end to a public servant who vowed to put her small town's interests first while she held a position that many tried to influence. I will rise up as many times as God allows me so that I can keep seeking, fighting for, and working out plans, projects, and actions for the benefit of the people, especially those most in need. Let us not forget the life of Maria Santos. Her uncommon courage and bravery, combined with her commitment to helping her people in the face of the filth that is the drug cartel, empowers us all to fight evil in our own way. Despite her painful wounds, she gladly lived a lifetime. She continued her calling and fought to the death against the powers of darkness that would infiltrate her city and try to destroy her people. In honor of Maria Santos, I challenge you, as citizens, mayors, police chiefs, and as government officials to stand up as she did and make a difference in your world. Maria Santos Gros Tieta, may you rest in peace knowing you fulfilled your sacred call here on earth. Your life was not in vain as you have inspired countless of thousands to pick up where you left off in the fight against evil and tyranny.